Hello, my friends. Hello, it's Matthew Street. Welcome to my channel. I truly appreciate you being here. And folks, I am back for another video, and I thought I'd do something a little different today, uh, maybe something that will pique your interest. I thought I would take, go through my entire collection, and I'm sure there's many more than what I have. Maybe I'll do a part two, depending on how this goes. Ten albums that I have no clue why I still have them in my collection, because I never play them. I have not played some of these albums in not only years, but decades, decades. I have not taken this vinyl and put it on my player and actually sat down and listened to them. So I'm like, why do I have them? Why don't I unload them? Why do I save them? What I should go through them. I got to cull the collection as they were, as they call it, culling the collection because I have stuff that just sits here and I don't know what it is. Am I like a hoarder? I don't think I am when I see what other people have in their collection. My collection is fairly mod modest, I have to say. I mean, I have a lot of records, but um, as I'm looking at it now, and I got a few over there, but I don't have nearly what some people have, and, and, and God bless them. I'm so happy they have what they have and they enjoy it, but I know I have so many records in my collection that I could unload, get rid of them. I just don't know how to do it. I, and I don't have the patience or the time to sit, go on eBay and set up an account and take pictures of my records and then post a thing. Hey, you want this one? Hey, you want this one by so-and-so? And, and oh yeah, I'll take that for $10. Oh, and then you gotta package it and mail it. I don't have the patience. Should I just take them to a record store? Will they take them from me? I'm sure they would for free, but could I get a couple of bucks for them? I don't know, what could I get? Anyway. So I thought it'd be fun today, folks. Ten records in my collection that I have no clue why I have them. And again, this is not to disparage any of the artists I'm about to show you. I bought them for some reason. I acquired them for some reason. So I have them. I must have liked them at some point or something about them I must have enjoyed, but not anymore. I just, I don't play them. Decades, years. Okay, let's go to number ten. And this is no particular order. Number ten is this. Hooked on Classics, who remembers this? And then this was in 1981. A year later, Hooked on Classics 2 came out. Remember when these were the rage? And then there was Hooked on Swing and Hooked on Swing 2 and blah, 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 and Hooked on this and Hooked on that. And k -Tel put these things out, okay? Now, the only thing I can gather why I have them is somehow I, I inherited them through my parents' collection or something, but I, I was going through my collection not too long ago to make this video, and I'm like, what am I doing with these? I don't play them. <laughs> Nothing against them. I'm sure they were fun at parties and outdoor cookouts back in the day, throwing hooked on classics and everybody get into it, I guess, but I don't know why I have it, all right? That's the first one. The second one, I like this artist. I think she's so talented. What a heck of a songwriter she is, and... I don't play it. Carol King, Rhymes and Reasons. Came out in 1972. The only thing I can think why I have this is because this was the follow-up to her very famous, sold like 30 million copies or something, of her Tapestry album. Remember that album? Carol King Tapestry came out in 70 or 71. This was the follow-up to that. It's the only reason I can think why I have this is because I really enjoyed Tapestry a lot. My parents had Tapestry. They played it a million times. And so that album is ingrained in my soul, you know, so as it were. Memories of my parents and growing up, listening to music in our living room. That's the only reason I can think I have this. I might have seen this somewhere at a yard sale and said, oh, Carol King. Well, that's the follow-up to Tapestry. I love that so much. I might as well... Folks, I don't think I've put this on my stereo in over 30 years, <laughs> if that. So, number number uh, two there. All right, number three. Nothing against this guy. I mean, he, great songwriter, great entertainer, singer. He was so popular in the 80s. Big, big, big artist. Only a few notches down from some of the biggies like Springsteen and Prince and Michael Jackson. And that's Lionel Richie. And this is his album called Can't Slow Down from 1983. Now, I think the album before this was the big famous one of his that came out in 82. It might have been self-titled, Lionel Richie. And then this was his follow-up. And I don't know if there was a song on here I liked. Uh, well, All Night Long is on here all night. You know, all night long. 
Now that's on here, but I don't know why I would have liked that one. Um, is there anything on here? I really would have... I, Stuck on You, that was a pretty big hit. I don't know, folks. For some reason, I bought this. I don't know why. Don't, don't even ask me why. I have no clue. And it's nothing against Lionel Richie. He's a heck of a songwriter and entertainer. But I don't know why I bought this. And I, if I got this in 1983 for whatever reason, maybe one of the songs on here piqued my interest, so I bought the entire album. Maybe I got it cheap or something. Folks, if I got this in 83, I have not played this since 1983. You're talking over 40 years. Okay, let's go on to the next one. <sighs> Love this artist. One of the rock and roll pioneers, Eddie Cochran. And this is his album called A Legend in Our Time. I know exactly why I bought this. And I couldn't even find a year for this thing. That's how obscure it is. It's on the... Uh, the Spice Label or something. I don't know what this is. It's made in Holland, all right, so that, very flimsy. The only reason I could think I bought this is because I love Eddie Cochran. I love the rock and roll pioneers, Gene Vincent, Elvis, Buddy Holly, Fats Domino, Little Richard, Carl Perkins, I'm Jerry Lee Lewis, love them all, and I love Eddie Cochran. And I probably wanted Eddie Cochran's best of because this has quite a few things on it, as you can see. However... The sound quality of this stinks, horrid, unlistenable, terrible fidelity, terrible sonic sound, horrible. I just bought it on a whim, thought I was getting the best of Eddie Cochran, and it is horrible. And anyone else have this dog, pig out there? It's terrible. Thankfully, later on, I got CDs and I got another vinyl that's more official. I think the vinyl's made by Rhino, Best of Eddie Cochran, and it sounds good. This is horrible. Haven't played this in decades. Why do I have it? I don't know. You tell me. You're a record collector. Why do we save these things? Okay. Love this artist, too. I've seen him live several times. Always a champ live. He's just great. He delivers. Um, don't know how many more shows he'll be doing. He might be on a farewell tour thing right now. But it's the great Peter Frampton. And this is his album from 1982 called Art of Control. The Art of Control. There's Peter looking very new wave on the back of this 1982 album. Folks, this was several years after the peak period for Peter. You know, when he came, he came out of Humble Pie and then he was doing solo stuff and he slowly put out albums, building, building, building up to the big 1976 smash, Frampton Comes Alive, which sold a gazillion copies. And then uh, I'm In You, the studio album after that, did very well in 1977. And, and then you're going to see an album he was part of in 1978 <laughs> that was coming up. That's part of the decline of Peter Frampton, as it were. So, you know, four years later, after the decline started, he comes out with this kind of new wave-ish album. And, my, I, and folks, I haven't listened to it so long that I could be wrong about it. And maybe it's not new wave. You tell me, because I just, I have it, but I don't listen to it. I don't think, look, it's still got the shrink wrap on it. I, I bought it because I'm a fan of Peter Frampton, but I don't think I've listened to this thing. came out, like I said, 1982. I don't think I've listened to it since 1983. <laughs> so, you tell me. Love this artist, too. Have many of his more famous albums from the 70s. But, ah, this is hard to... He did come back after this album. In 1982, he put out an album, I believe, called Abracadabra. I think that's what it was called. And it did very well for me. It had several top 40 hits on it. But the one before that, before he started making his comeback a little bit, Steve Miller, the Steve Miller Band with this album from 1981 called The Circle of Love or Circle of Love. And folks, I can't even tell you why I bought this. The only thing I can think of as I look back on it is there's a song on here called, called Heart Like a Wheel. See the top song there on side uh, one, Heart Like a Wheel? I think that was the, the hit, the lower level top 40 hit he had on this. And it was a pretty good song and I think I liked it so I grabbed it. All right, what's on the other side here? Some more images. Oh, upside down dubs, whatever. All right, I don't care. <laughs> because I like that. I think I, I, I should have put it on to listen to how much I like Heart Like a Wheel now, all these years later. But I liked Heart Like a Wheel, so I bought the album. I probably got it cheap. Probably a nice price sticker here or something. I got, must have got it cheap. And I, this side two, the whole side two is called Macho City. 
It could be great. It could be brilliant. I don't remember. I don't know. I don't care. But anything that takes up a whole side of a record that's called Macho City, don't think I want to even try it anymore, okay? But maybe I'll put on Hot Like a Wheel uh, and, and see how it sounds, <laughs> you know? But I don't know why I have this. I haven't listened in decades. All right, this guy, this was, I think, a one-hit wonder. I, I don't know what it was. It's a song called A Fine, Fine Day. is a song I think I heard on the radio. And it just piqued me enough to, instead of getting, maybe I couldn't find the 45, so I grabbed the whole album because I got it for $1.99 on sale. It's an artist called Tony Carey, Some Tough City is the name of the album. And the big hit on it was called A Fine, Fine Day. Do you remember that song? It was from 1984, so we're talking, we're at the 40-year mark for this album. But I don't think I've listened to this album since 1984. So, I, for whatever reason, I liked the song A Fine, Fine Day for like a nanosecond. Bought the album for a buck ninety-nine back in the day, and it's sat in my collection now for four decades. All right? You tell me. <laughs> Great artist here. Sadly, we lost him a few years back. And I think I know the story behind this one. This is Prince and the Revolution, came out in 1985, it's called Around the World in a Day. And I know exactly why I bought this album. The back, it folds open like that, and then you can open it up like this. And I know exactly why I bought it. The year before, 1984, was his big smash breakthrough, um, Purple Rain. I mean, there was a soundtrack to Purple Rain, the song Purple, you know, Let's Go Crazy, hit after hit after hit for Prince. And there was a song on here I liked called Raspberry Beret. And um, I, I bought this for that. And because he had such a big year earlier, because I, I think I have the Purple Rain soundtrack over here as well. And I love that. I, listen, I love Let's Go Crazy. I love all the big hits on there. But um, I think I bought this thinking, oh, P Prince, you know, but... It just, it didn't do it for me, the entire album. I like the song Raspberry Beret. I bought it for that, but it's been sitting in my collection. I don't think I've played this in 30 years or more. Who knows? Okay, next one. We're getting down there. Two left. Well, speaking of Peter Frampton, remember I said around 78, after the big Frampton Comes Alive in 76, the I'm and You album came out in 77, and then he gets involved in this dog. <laughs> 1978, along with the Bee Gees, along with the great Billy Preston, George Burns. Can I go on and on and on? What a horror show this was. What a dumpster fire this was. What a <laughs> toilet bowl flush this was. All right, I won't be so bad. I won't try not to be hard on it, but the movie came out and the soundtrack came out because it was Beatles related. And at that time I was in high school and Beatle maniac out. I, I went to the movie, hated it, bought the soundtrack, hated it. Still really don't care for it. But in all due respect, there, there are some good things on here. I mean, looking back on it now, I don't know if that will translate. You can look it up. There's a lot of nice renditions of things on here. There's a lot of horror show stuff on here. Just stuff that's totally bad and terrible. And I'm not gonna take out sleeves and stuff, but you know, you get, you get some sleeves with pictures and things inside. Um, I haven't listened to this thing in decades, folks. I just don't care. Um, but there is some good versions. You know, there's Got to Get You Into My Life by Earth, Wind & Fire. Um, the girl who sang Strawberry Fields Forever, I forget her name. She's on here, and here comes the sun. Um, if I can find it for you, I'll tell you who, who she was. But uh, Sandy Farina sang Strawberry Fields Forever, and I think she did Here Comes the Sun. That's pretty good. She's a pretty voice. Uh, Frampton does a couple of okay things. The Bee Gees do a couple. Aerosmith Come Together is on here. I mean, there's some good stuff. Steve Martin does a silly version of When I'm 64, I believe. Is that what he did? I forget what he did. Uh, Maxwell Silverhammer. Steve Martin does Maxwell Silverhammer. He does it in a very comedic style. It's funny. It was funny in the movie. But I haven't listened to this in years. And last but not least, my number one, and I'll be out of here. Why do I have this in my collection? Number 10 here, the final one, Travolta Fever. Why? Why do I have this? I don't know, okay? Because 
Yes, I do enjoy the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. I like it. You know, there's some great stuff on there. It's a classic album. Let's be honest. Let's not put it down. Let's. It is for what it is. There's a lot of great artists on there. There's a lot of great songs on there. John Travolta starred in the movie as uh, Danny Terrio or whatever. <laughs> I don't even know what his name was. Danny Terrio. He was a dance instructor, wasn't he? I don't know. Anyway, but for some crazy odd reason, I bought this album called Travolta Fever, I think because he has his one top 10 hit on here called Let Her In. Do you remember that song, Let Her In? And I'm sorry I'm showing so much moose knuckle there, folks, but you know what I'm getting at. Uh, <laughs> all right, that's as far as I'll go, okay? But uh, here you go. That's for all you people, uh, you know. And here's another one for you. How's that? All right, all right, all right, all right. Get out of here, Matt. Put it away before you throw up. I get it. Okay, folks, I don't know why I have it. How I got it, it was probably for a buck somewhere. It has that one hit wonder on it, Let Her In by Travolta. So I bought it. But it is sickening. It's horrid. I know. I don't I have never listened to this entire album. Never. Okay? Why do I have it? I think I keep it for comedic reasons now or something. But that's it, folks. So there you have it. Let me get out of here before you get sick of me. You probably already are. But 10 albums that I have no clue why I have them in my collection. Take care. Bye-bye.